if you can see it or not, but just over my shoulder, you should be able to see some gray skies. And uh, it was dense fog today. And it's still foggy out, but it's beginning to lift. And it's interesting to me how different things from the Bible have been made real in my life. Especially sometimes in the area of typologies and the way things seem to have a connection. Now, this may not be directly what the scriptures say, per se, but it seems to fit in a lot of ways for me. And who knows, maybe, maybe it'll make sense to you. But I've always thought of fog as being kind of a spiritual deception. You know, it's kind of like it's a time of spiritual attacks, you know, that you're being spiritual warfare going on, so to speak. Because we know that in the heavens, when something happens in heaven, there's a direct correlation with what happens on earth. For instance, God pours out his cup of wrath or bowl judgment upon from heaven. And then by the time it hits earth, it becomes what we see them as, whether they be the first bowl, second bowl, whatever it may be, whether scorpions or you know, plagues or any type of physical manifestation of that which is going on from heaven. And that kind of, for me, means that there's like an interconnection between heaven and earth, and that there's also a connection between, we could say, the, the firmament of heaven or the dimension of heaven. You know, it could be a dimensional thing that the firmaments are. So, I've always thought, in looking at, you know, the sun and the moon and the stars, you know, how we know that they're by name and God named them and how they're used for signs and for wonders and for other things. And God said that they were. Well, for me, fog always was, it's the only thing that can confuse light because what it does, it diffuses it. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. So it no longer, light is not a benefit in fog. And then when you try to shine a light in fog, it almost blinds you because it comes back at you. The same thing is true about it being water. Is that it's a vapor. You know, it's just a, a vapor that's low lying and hangs on the ground. It doesn't really perform a function per se. It just seems to, and it's not a mist. It's just a fog that should you try to seek to walk very far in the fog without landmarks or some guidance, you have no idea where you're going or which way. And so I kind of played with that idea and thought about it for a long time and then it seemed like almost every day that it was foggy seemed to be true. It seemed like there was always some kind of spiritual <laughs> warfare or deception or something going on that wasn't normal. And so I kind of take it with a grain of salt even though it's my own idea but I also kind of treat it with a little bit of respect, both at the same time. So I'm just kind of aware, you know, I kind of spend a little more attention or focus on it. So today you're having kind of a tough day, you know, maybe think about that if it's foggy your way. <laughs> maybe seek the Lord a little bit about it. Who knows, maybe he may come up with a teaching for you that you might not have thought of, and maybe there might be an explanation that I've never found in the scriptures. But always seek to be led by what God is teaching you as he applies the word of God to you in each and every day that you live with him. Thou makes the outgoing of the morning and evening to rejoice. Psalm 65, 8. Get up early and go to the mountain and watch God make a morning. The dull gray will give way as God pushes the sun towards the horizon and there will be tints and hues of every shade that will blend into one perfect light as the full orb sun bursts into view. As the king of day moves forth majestically flooding the earth and every lowly veil, 
Listen to the music of heaven's choir as it sings of the majesty of God and the glory of the morning. The clear, pure light of the morning made me long for the truth in my heart, which alone could make me pure and clear as the morning. Tune me up to the concert pitch of the nature around me. And the wind that blew from the sunset made me hope in the God who had first breathed into my nostrils the breath of life, that he would at length so fill me with his breath, his mind, his spirit, that I should think only his thoughts and live his life, finding therein my own life only glorified infinitely. What should we poor humans do without our gods, nights, and mornings? You know, we're told that God causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall on the wicked and the good, and that as long as there is night and there is day, as long as there is morning and there is evening, that God's promises for us are true, and that we can rest assured in them. And so, in a lot of ways, there's a blessing to understanding that maybe God isn't in nature, but he created it. And being the creator, there's an aspect of the creator in his creation that we can learn from and maybe enjoy as a lesson and an application to our own lives, but also as a part of remembering that we are interconnected because the Creator created it all. And that the things that man makes maybe isn't quite so interconnected <laughs> with the Creator as we think. Sometimes it's a lot better to maybe take a moment instead of popping on the iPod and listen to some music or flashing on the computer and looking at a digital picture. Maybe once in a while get outside before dawn and watch a sunrise. If you have enough patience to be still long enough to watch the sun rise from the darkness, I'm sure that God has enough ability to come and meet you the day you do that and to speak with you in a way that you never thought he would before. I enjoy taking that long a time to sit still and be still that I might see that I might hear and that I might know the Lord my God as I see him cause the sun to rise and the sun to shine on a new day as each and every day he brings it our way for joy for us to enjoy every day